Do you believe, based on the reports that you've seen this morning and heard, that Israel has managed to at least convey superior capability to the Iranians? Well, they've certainly uh, displayed capability. Uh, I think the Israelis held back considerably. Uh, the fact that they could hit near Esfahan nuclear reactor, I think, was more of a message than it was a capability. And I think at this point, there's less chance of escalation than there was 24 hours ago. Would you consider this episode closed? Uh, my opinion doesn't matter. They've got to decide if this episode is closed. For me, uh, it would appear what they're trying to do is go back to the status quo, which is a war in the shadows, not a war in the, uh, in the open that they've had ever since the assassination of the Quds Force officers inside of the Damascus uh, embassy. How do you go back to a status quo, though, when red lines have been absolutely evaporated this week? especially considering the fact that we had drones and missiles coming from Iranian soil to Israel. There's no red lines. It's all been pushed. Yeah, I think I th that's a very good question, Amory. I think the fact that uh, it appears one of the targets of the Iranian attack was the Dimona nuclear facility in Israel. And the fact that the Israelis went after a target near the uh, Natanz nuclear reactors, which is the center of the Iranian programs, I think both of them have got to the cliff, they've looked over the edge, and perhaps this is a chance for them to pull back. What do you make of what we've seen from the U.S. response, particularly when they said it was a massive success, and it was, in terms of their capability to shoot down all these missiles and drones that were heading towards Israel? Yeah. But the fact that it happened means that where was the deterrence from the West? Uh, I think it's very surprising to see that the Iranians took the uh, uh, level of attack that they did to respond to the Syria uh, targeting. Uh, we had not seen that before. That was far more than we had even seen after the targeting of Soleimani. Uh, by comparison, the Iranian response to the American uh, operation against Soleimani was, was almost muted. Uh, we had a lot of soldiers get injured in that, but none were killed. But compared to the response uh, against uh, this recent incident in Syria, I think everybody is surprised. And at this point, everybody's trying to get the genie back into the bottle. When you talk about the genie into the bottle, are you talking about Iran representing strength at a time where an attack that exceeded all previous ones ultimately failed? Uh, that's the right way to put it. Uh, in many ways, Iran showed their weakness, not their strength, by doing this. Uh, but remember, they were not trying to achieve a military victory in this. What they were really trying to the, the, the victory they were trying to win was a soft power victory, to show that they are the head of the axis of resistance, to show that they would not stand for what Israel did in a foreign country. We're talking about the also coalition that was yeah. somewhat unprecedented of the U.S. and the U.K. and France, but also of Jordan and Saudi Arabia. Sure. How much was that sort of loosely uh, cobbled together coalition on uh, just this particular issue almost contingent on a resolution to what's going on in Gaza? Yeah, I, I think, first of all, it's important to understand that we have put together this coalition for over two decades now. It's been slow effort. We've tried to bring the entire region into a centralized air defense uh, capability. Uh, we are the Abraham Accords took care of some of the political issues, the military issues are being worked out. Uh, I think that this demonstrates to the region why they want to uh, work together more for the defense of the region, and both militarily and diplomatically. To me, this builds on the Abraham Accords, and uh, I would certainly hope that this continues. Well, for the Abraham Accords to continue, we really need to see Saudi Arabia and Israel sign a deal. And that can't happen without a resolution in Gaza, which I want to ask you about. Where does this leave Gaza, given the fact that we've kind of had this sideshow between Tehran and Jerusalem? Yeah, I'm really glad you call it a sideshow because in many ways, Emory, it is a sideshow. Everybody seems to think it's the main effort, but no, it's the sideshow. I, I don't think that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has slowed down one moment from his attack plans into Rafa. I think the real question is what happens the day after Rafa falls, the day after the Israelis declare that Hamas is no longer an effective fighting force and we've destroyed the infrastructure. Then the hard work of governance is going to come in, which we've talked about for quite some time. And until there's a solution on governance, there's really no solution on the two-state uh, question.